United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In compliance with the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, Laws of 1975 of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice of this meeting of the South River Board of Education was provided in the following manner. On April 16, 2024, the notice was delivered to the office of the South River Borough Clerk and posted at the Board of Education Administration Building. On April 16, 2024, the notice was faxed, mailed to the following newspapers, Home News Tribune, the Star Ledger. On April 16, 2024, the notice was posted at the South River Borough Clerk's Office. Roll call, Mr. Rose. Mr. Bazak. Here. Mr. Budson. Here. Mrs. Bush. Mrs. Bush has been excused. Mrs. Byrne. Here. Mrs. Lau. Here. Mr. Nielsen. Here. Mrs. Sadowski. Here. Ms. Young Yao. Here. Mrs. Urbanic. Mrs. Urbanic has been excused. Mrs. Emmanuel Bizera. Here. Dr. Paul. Tonight we're going to the public budget hearing of the Board of Education. I'm going to turn it over to Johnny and Dr. Silva. Silvia. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. Um, our presentation this evening is in multiple parts. It's in three parts. I'm going to begin with parts one and two. Part one really covers um, how this budget came to be developed. Part two goes into what you will see um, in terms of this budget in the upcoming year. And then part three, our business administrator, Mr. Rosa, will take over the presentation and really go over the financial impact of this budget for the 24-25 school year. So to get started, okay, um, I'd like to just really begin with an overview of how we develop a budget in general. Um, so this budget really addresses student programs, instruction, academic improvement, our facilities, maintenance, construction, staffing, professional development. And the process for creating this budget um, was really one that um, involves uh, several stakeholders. So you will see that we began with our staff, um, really getting an idea from the staff of what their priorities are, what their needs are, what they're seeing that our children um, need, and what um, is really aligned with our district goals as well. The staff have these conversations with our district administration, with our department um, supervisors, and then we have this conversation as the superintendent of schools and our business administrator, um, along with then our finance committee, then the full board. It's a process that actually begins in about October, believe it or not. So October, November, we'll already be speaking about the 25, 26 school year budget. Um, it's an incredible process. Okay. Um, so some of the factors that we consider when developing this budget is definitely the cap in terms of what we are allowed to put out to our taxpayers to contribute to this budget, uh, as well as the increased costs that we may have with some of our populations, for example, special needs. Uh, we also look at facility maintenance, what's really due for repair, for replacement. Uh, we also look at what the federal and state mandates are because we know we have to really um, abide by those. We also take a look at safety, security, and our contract uh, obligations. So for example, if we're contracted to provide health benefits to our staff and those are rising costs, we are obligated to those costs uh, in this budget as well as any raises in salaries and so on. Some of the cost saving measures are listed in this slide. We do participate with some co-ops, which means that we can get services and goods um, at a lesser cost, at a more affordable cost for the district, and that we have um, vendors who have these state contracts that provide us this special pricing. So in this budget, um, what's really important to note is that we do not allocate in a certain amount to each department. So we don't say, for example, athletics, you have 
$10,000. Um, that's not our budget process at all. We really do uh, set up a budget that is a zero-based budget, which means you tell us what you need, and then we're going to compare that to our priorities, compare that to our fiscal um, allocation, and then based on those priorities, we're going to develop this budget. So we don't take, let's say, for example, a whole number and divide it by the number of departments and say everybody gets this much. <coughs> that really wouldn't align with the needs of our students. So that's really important to know. In terms of um, the process, once the budget is developed, we are required to do this public hearing for you. Uh, and then the budget does get approved by the full board. Then it also gets approved by the county superintendent's office as well. So we want to make sure that uh, we're fully staffed with qualified personnel. We want to make sure that um, we can maintain appropriate class size, and this budget proudly does that. Uh, we want to have instructional resources that are updated and aligned with standards. Again, this budget allows for that. And then we also want to make sure we have the instructional programs and supports that our children need. So what's new? Well, it's a big list. Um, and we're proud of it. It's a really big list in terms of student programs, instruction, and academic improvements. We have some new textbooks that we need. Um, you can see the subject areas there, AP Spanish, French, financial literacy. We have new Chromebooks that we need. Um, we have uh, equipment and network, that, that our network that we need to update as well. We have one courtesy bus route for the elementary and middle school. We also have some courtesy busing for our primary school on an existing route, and we're going to continue that as well. We have curriculum updates. The state of New Jersey has told us that um, there are major changes in the standards coming up for this year, and we have to have all of our curriculum aligned by September of this year. So we are investing um, funding in um, supporting our teachers in the development of those curriculum guides. And they'll be doing a lot of that work this uh, spring and summer. Um, we have the Early Learning Center, which I'll speak to a little bit more later on in this presentation. We have mental health services, restorative community service, which we have been funding through a grant, but now we're moving into this budget as that grant expired. We have um, a new freshman boys soccer team we have a varsity boys volleyball team, that's new. We have um, portable bleachers at Denny Stadium. This is not a bleacher system, I wanna be clear about that, but we will have bleachers on the home side of our Denny Stadium for our spectators, and we will also have bleachers, again, on the visitor side. So that, again, gives us an area for our visitors as well as our uh, home spectators during those uh, games and activities at the stadium. Uh, marching band is getting new uniforms and supplies. We have an AP computer science program that we're initiating. We needed a new district mascot. Ours was a little bit aged and worn. We definitely needed a new one. Emmanuel, I see you nodding, mm -hmm. and she cool. agrees. <laughs> um, an AP summer academy, more field trips, and some recess supplies and programming. Under construction facilities and maintenance, again, a pretty long list here. We have more security and access control. This is an upgrade to our security locking system. LED lighting, um, an outdoor courtyard project at the middle school. Uh, once again, our early learning center construction. Uh, we have our first payment to make towards that project, and we'll speak more about that later on in this presentation. We have um, a new district truck and plow that we need for those snowy days. We got away with uh, very little snow for a few years, but this, this winter um, challenged us a bit, and we definitely need the new equipment. We have some steps um, behind the high school that we need to redo. They're in disrepair, and they need to be addressed. Um, we have a visitor management system, which helps us monitor who is coming into our buildings and makes sure that they are going through um, a monitoring system and that we make sure that they are safe to be in our buildings. Uh, reunification materials in the event that we do have to evacuate for any reason. Uh, grade two is getting new furniture. They are due for that. Um, once again, there's something in here about the early learning center, which I'll address in a different slide. 
We have a roof replacement for the primary school and an HVAC system for the elementary school and the middle school. These projects are partially funded through um, our, what's called an SDA grant. In this case, the state will be paying for 49% of those projects through a grant that we applied for. Um, so the district will not be responsible for the full amount of those projects, which is a really great cost savings for the district and also a great opportunity to get these, these projects done that really need it. Uh, flooring for the high school STEM robotics room that's needed. The guidance office is getting a bit of a makeover as well as our teacher's lounge. Um, that definitely needs it. And we are doing a multi-lined turf field. Um, and this is coming behind the elementary school. That is where our current soccer field is. This is not at Denny Stadium, but it is behind the elementary school. The current soccer field is in very poor condition. We have had conversations about this. We have had students tell us that they are concerned about the condition of this field. This allows us to have a new safe place for our kids to play, but also for multiple sports to take advantage of this area. So that is in our budget for next year as well. We are painting the interior of the primary school. It's been a while and it definitely needs it. And we have some security upgrades as well. So a pretty long list there that we are um, very happy to present. Staffing, professional development and recruitment. We are looking for a bilingual climate and culture specialist. Um, we have a math teacher that we are adding to the high school, a dance teacher at the high school as well. We are just about to complete our high school edition, which does have a dance studio. We are looking forward to opening up some dance courses, and therefore we need a dance teacher and a dance advisor um, as well for that. We're looking to add one lunch aid, and we, are, we currently have our climate and culture specialists. They are currently grant funded. That grant has expired. We are moving them into the local budget. And then also we're adding an unarmed security staff member at the middle school. Whew, that's a long list. <laughs> All right, so I referenced the Early Learning Center several times. And um, the Early Learning Center was a project that we went out for a referendum. Uh, we were looking to build a brick and mortar building uh, along with a new stadium and a new turf field at Denny Stadium. That referendum did not pass. And I just want to be clear about the intent of a referendum. The intent of a referendum is to ask our community members and our taxpayers to fund a project, um, but not to necessarily approve that project. The needs of the district are the needs of the district. And so um, although the funding uh, wasn't acquired through the referendum, the, the need for early learning center remained. And so we have worked within our budget to uh, repurpose this project, and we are doing a modular early learning center to accommodate our students that will be open for September of 2024. Uh, we're looking to have 12 classrooms at that early learning center, and in our following uh, meeting, we have some more information about how that project is coming along. <clears throat> so for the Early Learning Center, and I just want to be clear that the items on this slide are not items from our local budget. These are not um, items that are impacted by our local tax levy at all. These are all funded through preschool aid. And the district applied for this preschool aid um, in 2019. <clears throat> now, if we had not applied for this aid or if we had chosen not to move forward with the preschool, then that funding would have still been allocated within the governor's state budget, but it simply would have been allocated to a different district, a different group of kids. So we took really the opportunity um, to use those funds to apply for that grant and to be able to provide an early childhood education to our students. So everything you see on this list, and I won't read everything through it, um, is funded through that grant. And here are some more of the grants. So this preschool aid grant that I just referenced is almost $3 million per year, as you can see. It's significant, and it really fully funds our uh, pre-K program. We have a safety grant, 
We have our IDEA grant for special ed, an E-rate grant, which, which is for technology. Uh, we also have uh, an AP expansion grant that we've applied for, and our 21st century grant. This grant was also one um, that we pursued very, very strongly, and we did so because our COVID ESSER funds were coming to expire. We had used those funds for a lot of projects, a lot of clubs, a lot of activities, and knowing that we couldn't sustain them without additional funding, we went and we applied for this grant. We were successful. We're looking at, um, we had $500,000 for this grant this year. We're looking at another $2 million in the next four years. This grant is giving us our summer programs now, all of our after-school programs, enrichment like robotics, coding for our female students who are interested, um, coding programs across the board, flamenco dancing is one of the activities, um, language instruction, it's really a great, great program for academic support, enrichment as well. Our SDA program, which is what I mentioned to you before, it's helping to fund our roofs and our HVACs. Um, our preschool facilities expansion, this is another grant that we applied for. It allows us to actually do an addition um, that we can use for classrooms for more preschool. Um, because even with uh, the early learning center in place, we still have people on a wait list to get into our program. Registration for preschool is just about to close. We have 110 applicants, and that doesn't include the kids who are currently enrolled. So a lot of interest in our pre-K program. Um, and then we also have the uh, summer learning grant that we've applied for. So you can see um, all of these grants, really just splitting 21st century into a one year for 24, 25, uh, really almost equal $8 million. So. All right, so I will turn it over to Mr. Rosa, and he will go over the financial impact of this budget. Thank you. Thank you and welcome, and thank you for coming today. Um, Dr. Zercher did an amazing job explaining all the, all the things that we have going on now in the, in the district and what we have planned for the future. Um, to say that she keeps us busy is an understatement. You saw all the programs and everything that we're funding, but it's not only that we're funding these programs, it's that she's uh, requiring us to find alternative ways to fund such of all the grants that she explained at, at the tune of almost $8 million. Um, and that brings me to the first uh, uh, revenue source that we have here. Uh, what you see in the slides are all the revenue source that makes up our budget. And the first one is um, called Access Surplus. By having all these grants, it helps us to keep, retain some of the money that we could use uh, in the future. Uh, and this is part of it. Um, our debt service levy um, to pay old, old bonds. We should be done with that in the next three years. Um, our lo local tax levy. There it is. Um, our state aid this year, we got an additional $4 million. Um, other state funds, such as non-public funding um, that just flows through the district. Um, for our Medicaid students, we get some, some funding, um, some miscellaneous income. Our preschool aid, as, as uh, Dr. Zercher had explained. Um, our federal programs, such as title uh, programs, title one, two, three, and four and IDEA programs, um, our capital reserve withdrawal for all the uh, capital improvements that we're doing within the school. And this is, um, amounts to $59,976,027, which is uh, our budget for next year. Um, in this pie chart, you can see how it breaks down by the departments. Our, our instruction, um, which is always the, our top priority and our top expense, 26.66%, and all the other um, categories such as special ed, support services, operations, um, general administration, employee benefits, um, capital projects, our preschool, our debt service, and our federal programs that uh, compasses on our, uh, what is our uh, budget. <clears throat> our expenditures and numbers, this is what it looks like. Um, these are, this is what was on the pie. Uh, chart. I'm not going to go through every single one of them, but you can see 
um, it comes up to the $59,976,027. Right. Our biggest expense, um, and usually in most schools it, it, this is true, um, about 67% of our general expenses is staffing and benefits. That we require this is a mandated uh, cost, and it's a cost that we need to be able to um, fund our staff and make sure that the uh, students have the resources and the help that they need and the supports. And this uh, comes up to thirty-three million ninety-one thousand twenty-four dollars. If we see our expenditures over the years compared to the state average, um, we are still way below. We're three years behind. Uh, three years ahead and still below the number of the average of the state, meaning that the state in 22-23 spent $19,072 per student. We in 24-25 are projecting to spend $18,975. Um, we are still considered, even though with, it looks like a big budget of $59 million, we are $7 million um, below adequacy. Um, here are some statistical data. Um, our total enrollment has increased over 6.3%. Um, our special ed enrollment uh, has increased 8% um, to 485 students. Our English language learners um, has increased 14%, uh, 575. And our free and reduced, we are now 52% of the total district um, are eligible for the free and reduced uh, lunch program. Um, and this slide is demonstrate what, how the tax impacts um, our property owners and our uh, rateables here in the, in the South River. Um, this budget will have a $64 uh, per year increase from the year before, or $5.33 per month. And that is the presentation. <clears throat> Thank you. Okay. Are there any questions or anything else that we can clarify for um, our audience today? Yes, yes. Uh, immediately following this presentation, as of tomorrow, it will be posted. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I do want to take a moment to thank um, all of the staff and the team that puts all of this work together. It's not easy to um, develop this budget. It takes a lot of people working together. Um, but again, it's a budget that we are proud of. We believe that it really addresses the needs of our students. And, um, and we're happy to, uh, to see it through and put it forth for 24-25. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zirchner. Mr. Rose, thank you very much. Very informative. A lot of hard work to put into this with the staff and uh, the board members on the finance committee. I want to thank them for all they did. Um, it's a big number, but like uh, Mr. Rose has said, we're still $7 million in the hole from where we should be. So I want to thank you. Roll call? No, that's the uh, reception. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, right now we'll open up to reception of visitors. At this time, the public may address agenda items only. Please state your name and address. Please keep your comments to a 10-minute time limit. First call, second call, third call. Close the public portion. The Excuse me? Are we done with the meeting? No. If you have something to say in regards to what you just heard here, no, you can no, get up and speak. Not regarding this. OK. okay. There will be another one, there will be another one uh, shortly, OK? Uh, finance. Ms. Well. Thank you. Uh, we have one item uh, to approve the 2024-2025 budget, and I so move. I'll second. All in favor? Roll call. Roll call. Mr. Rose. Okay. Yes. Mr. Bazak. Yes. Mr. Budson. Yes. Mrs. Byrne. Yes. Mrs. Lau. Yes. Mr. Nielsen. Yes. Mrs. Sadowski. Yes. This is Young Yao. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Mr. Nielsen, may I add something at this point? Since yes, the you may. Passed? 
I just want to reiterate that uh, the process is long and it's like very detailed and involved. Um, and over the years, being on the finance committee with uh, Mr. Bazek and Ms. Bush, uh, we've had the ability of seeing different administrators go through the process, right? And it's a great learning experience uh, to know how our BA changed. Uh, we had a previous BA that retired and the process was, was seamless. So we had it in place and we went with it as best as we could. We did the exact same strategy, uh, but it, it still improved because with the addition of Mr. Rosa, he was able to know more consortiums. He was able to know different people. Um, and then the team isn't just what's here, like uh, his office is a huge part of this. So I'd like to mention uh, his secretaries out there in the back, Ms. Rushfield. She does a lot behind the scenes and it's, it's literally a truly collaborative effort for the district. Uh, and I don't want to exclude anyone in the process because it matters how each, each person did something that meant a lot to them so that this budget could be put together for students. In the end, it's about the kids, right? And who teaches, who, who's there for the kids? We have our family members at home that support our educational process. We have our teachers, our paras, our secretaries, everybody in the district, our custodian. Everything on that budget hits upon one of those uh, components, if not one time, at least many times. And that's the goal. The goal is to create a nicely balanced, fair budget across the board, but in the end, that at the end of the year you can say, look how much we did for kids, look how much we did so that the education can progress in this town. Uh, and that, that's all I really wanted to say, that it, it really is a team effort that goes into it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Long. Any other members have any comments or statements? No? Good. Second visit. Yeah. At this time, we're going to open it up the f uh, floor again to reception of visitors. The public may address any concern at this time, comment that they have for the board. Please state your name and address. Please keep your comments to a 10 minute time limit. Now, sir, if you wish to say something else besides what was on the budget, you can speak if you so desire. No? First call? Second? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you over there. Go ahead. We're, we're going to do, do our second meeting oh, in okay. a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. First call, second call, third call, close the public portion. Motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Closing? Yeah, all in favor? All in favor. All in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, that's the end of the first one.